This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. 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 Introducing Dick Donovan, the former district attorney of the Pauling County Judicial Circuit in Georgia. Dick's dedication to justice was well known, but his personal and professional lives became intertwined when one of his own, Jamie White, an assistant district attorney, was caught shoplifting at the Cedar Town Walmart. The irony was palpable. Jamie, entrusted to prosecute shoplifters, found herself on the wrong side of the law. As the news spread, it cast a shadow over the reputation of both Jamie and Dick, who was left grappling with the embarrassment of the situation. Handling the case was Cedar Town City Prosecutor Stephanie Burford, tasked with bringing Jamie to justice. However, behind closed doors, a controversial deal was struck between Dick and Stephanie. In exchange for dropping charges in one of Stephanie's cases, Jamie's charges would be similarly dismissed. Dick began harassing Jamie and wanted something in return for getting her charges dropped. Jamie began recording Dick and eventually sued and won a settlement for $300,000 for sexual harassment. Dick was investigated by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and charged with various crimes. Enjoy this exclusive content and please consider becoming a member to support more content like this. This revelation sets the stage for a compelling series that delves into the depths of corruption within our judicial system. Through thorough examination of the facts and in-depth interviews, we will uncover the extent of misconduct among these government officials. Today's Wednesday, August 28, 2019, time is 1.05 p.m. Got the interview with Jamie White and her attorney, Tim Morris. Like we kind of did uh, just to start off is I just want you to understand that due to the fact you're a public employee, that you have certain rights, those being that you don't have to cooperate in a criminal investigation. Um, if you have any questions about that, please let me know or ask your attorney. But um, basically that's what I'm doing is conducting a criminal investigation into two different individuals, one being Donald Donovan, the other one being Stephanie Burford. Um, you were merely a witness in this investigation. but. Um, Knowing that uh, your cooperation is still voluntary and you're still free to leave at any time and, and not answer any questions. you understand that? I understand. Thank you. Okay. Um, and if I do not make sense, I did not get a lot of sleep last night. Uh, I'm single parenting it and my two kids were um, a handful. So uh, please re-ask me. <laughs> six months and five years. So You have a six month old. It's fun times. Yes. Yes. I have a 14 year old. So. Uh, you're past that, yes. that joy. Yes, so. it's different joy. Yes. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is just start off with, um, and if you want, we can steer away from what you have going on civilly and try to focus on this, is um, walk me through uh, what initiated this by, when I say that, the uh, incident that happened at Walmart. And you don't have to get into specifics of the actual crime itself, but you know, the events following that is kind of what I'm really looking into. Okay, would it be appropriate to go ahead and start with um, the jail and the, and what happened at the jail and go from there? Would that be okay? I think it would be appropriate for you to give him the context of, of what had happened leading up to that and when you first realized that he had an interest in you other than... Okay, that would be at the jail. Right. That's when he okay. told me all about it. So, so that's when that all started? Yes, it okay. started at the jail. And when when was this time period? That would have been um, October, I want to 14th, October 14th, 2017. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. And just to steer away from that, uh, you got arrested for shoplifting. Correct. And so what happened after that? All right, I was, um, uh, I began to speak to Walmart basically about, hey, I think you've misunderstood some things. Can we talk this out? Um, when I realized that they didn't have a choice in whether or not we talked it out or I tried to uh, tell them my side of the story um, that they were going to arrest me, um, I went ahead and from Walmart contacted my parents to come and pick up my daughter who was with me. And I also, uh, according to policy manual as well as just professional courtesy and to reach out, I called Mr. Donovan. Um, 
the, 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 the motivation behind that phone call was to make him aware because I realized that I was about to be transported to jail and I didn't know if deputies would know who I was or if word would get back to him and then he's finding out about a, a, his employee being arrested. Um, it's very important for him, loyalty, things like that, so I wanted to make sure he heard it from me first before any deputies called or any chit-chat right. or gossip. Yeah. And how long have you worked at that point with um, the DA's office? Nine and a half years. At that point? Yeah. And your role at that time was the... Victim witness coordinator. Okay. I run the victim witness unit there. Okay, so you uh, contacted him... Um, how did you call him? Did you call him on his personal cell, uh, yes. work cell? Yes, we would always contact, anybody contacts him on his personal on cell. His personal That's cell. very okay. appropriate. Um, and uh, I contacted him to make him aware. Um, I was very upset um, on the phone. I told him um, that uh, basically what had happened, I felt like it was going to be okay, um, but they were going to transport me and book me. It looked like it was that they were going to book me in. So um, I would... I would figure it out in the wash. I was adamant that I didn't need any help, want anything. Um, I made that clear a couple of times. Uh, he uh, reassured me it would be fine and to calm me down. Um, and he, I think he alluded to some point that he wanted to help. And I said, look, I, I really just wanted to let you know what was going on before anybody else told you. Um, and I'll get back with you later. We'll figure it out. But just wanted to make you aware. Um, and I hung up the phone. At that point, did he say he was going to come or anything like that? Um, no, I don't think he told me that okay. he was coming. Um, but And I say that because when he was at the jail, I was very surprised that he was there. Um, I was taken to the jail, and um, one of the people, um, were jail personnel, had made a comment that I would probably be in and out kind of thing. Right. Um, so when, when you took to the jail, which one did you go to? Um, the one in Cedartown, uh did you go to the Cedartown Police Department or did you go to the Sheriff's Office? I believe it's Polk, Polk County. County Sheriff's okay. Polk County Jail, Polk County Sheriff's Department. Um, the Walmart that I was at was the Cedartown Walmart. Okay. Um, from there, I was able to uh, make a phone call to my mom. Um, just I wanted to make sure that my daughter was okay. Um, and also to make sure that, um, although I felt like at the time I was really, really, really when I say I'm upset, I... I I mean, I'm just, my mind's just crazy. So right. I, I'm kind of trying to say that I don't deserve a ride home from jail, but at the same time, like, Mom, can you just come pick me up so that I can get back to my daughter and get home? Um, and she said, sure, um, she would be happy to. Um, she said that Mr. Donovan had contacted her, um, and I don't recall how that was possible, but said something um, to the effect that Mr. Donovan had contacted her, and I said, I don't, or something about a ride maybe and I said no I want you to come get me um, my mom was very sick and ill and um, I, w I did feel bad about that but I, I felt I felt like I just wanted my mom there you know and so um, went through the process there I'm walking out of the jail and the first pro to be to be let go I'm walking assuming that my mom was going to be in the parking lot the first person I see sitting on the bench was Mr. Donovan Mr. Donovan was there, and of course, I broke down and cried. Um, I was very upset. Um, I was mostly ashamed and embarrassed, and I was kept saying to him that I was afraid that it would bring shame to the DA's office name, and I didn't want to do that, and I didn't want to bring um, shame to him or the office, and um, even made an indication that I feel like as, an, as a supervisor, one of the supervisors and one of the people who are supervising in the unit that he had to, you know, fire me or let me go until I could get it all worked out. <coughs> he said, absolutely not. He gave me a big hug. He told me it was going to be okay. Um, and I, uh, when I, when, after he hugged me, I looked up and was like, Where's, there's my mom. I saw my mom's car. And he goes, oh, I told her not to come. And I said, well, um, let me go speak to her. And he said, I'll give you a ride back to your car that's still at Walmart at the time and um, tell her I will give you a ride back. And so um, I went and, I went and uh, tapped on my mom's window. I told her thank you for coming, but that Mr. Donovan had come and offered to take me back. And I think I made a joke, some, some sort of a joke or um, snide remark is I need to take my lecture, I need to take my punishment, and I need to just go ahead and take that he's going to fire me and he's going to give me a lecture and be disappointed, so I might as well ride back with him to, the, to Walmart from there. Um, she asked me a couple of times, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'll be fine, and uh, I got in the car with Mr. Donovan. 
What was he driving? He was driving the, um, he drives a, a, a Tahoe state uh, vehicle, um, silver. Um, I can't recall whether he told me in the parking lot or in the car, but he that was one of the lead offs is, you know why I did this, right? You know why I helped you. You know why um, I'm not going to fire you. You know why, don't you? You have to know why. You have to know why. And, and again, I'm not really thinking very clearly. I'm very upset. When I say sort of an emotional breakdown is what I would probably describe as. So I'm crying, and then he's stopping to, to tell me that it's going to be okay to calm down and to quit panicking. Um, and I said, no, you know, I really don't understand why anybody would help me out in this manner because um, it was my understanding that I think the process was sped up because he had possibly contacted the um, DA there. Um, and why do you think that? I think he had, like, it seemed like someone had mentioned that, and I don't know that he directly told me, and that part's a little fuzzy, but I was under the impression that he called the DA and got me, I guess, like an OR bond. That part's still really great to me because I saw a citation for shoplifting, and pardon my ignorance because I'm still kind of ignorant to this. I got a citation thinking it was like a, a what, a, like a you pay it and you go on about your way kind of citation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to say completely stupid, but like like you would get arrested for a driving offense. Right. So I guess I was thinking at that time that maybe a citation was paid on my behalf, and that's why I got out. Um, later, I'd find out that I was given, I guess, an, maybe a bond or an OR bond, and it, he was he paid for that. Um, eventually, um, he told me there at the jail that the reason that he had done all of that um, and that I, he can't believe that I cannot possibly see it was that he had been in love with me for four years. And he was in love with me and had been in love with me for over four years. And this is on the ride to your vehicle? This was still in the parking lot of the jail. Okay. Like I said, I can't recall if we were standing outside of the vehicle or inside of the vehicle, but he did. this is after you told your mom to go on? Right. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there talking to him, and, mm-hmm. and this is what he says yes. to you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, he drives me back to Walmart, which is just a few-minute drive from the jail. Um, pulled into the parking spot behind, beside my car and began to talk. Uh, mostly the conversation was about how I just, you know, was uh, don't know why this happened. Uh, you know, I don't know what led up to this day. I don't let up to the confusion. I'm very sorry. I'm I'm extremely shameful and sorry, sorrowful, and keep telling him that I'm sorry. And he keeps telling me that there's no reason to apologize. That I have no reason to to say I'm sorry and to be ashamed and that it's fine. When you say what led up to this, you're re- referring to him being in love with you, or are you talk- are you referring to the shoplifting? What do you mean? You said you were having conversations mostly about what what led up to this. Oh, what led up to this for me? The day, the the I mean, nothing really circumstantial. Just like I don't know how this all happened. Um, the shoplifting or him being in love with you? That's what I'm asking. Oh no, not definitely not. Just the day, the shoplifting situation. Like okay. it is for me. It is about. I, I thought you were talking. Uh, making the statement that you didn't know how, why he was in love with you or you don't know what no, you did because of him being in love sure, with you. Sure, and I did say that later Okay. Um, because he kept circling everything back. Every time I was still talking about, you know, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm so ashamed. What am I going to do? You know, am I going to go to jail? Or am I going to, you know, all of those things. He keeps circling back to it's going to be okay and I'm in love with you and, and do you have you not seen this? Have you not known that I've been in love with you? I mean, how can you not know that? Um, And, of course, I say, no, I didn't know that. Um, I say I'm very surprised by uh, that statement. I'm also kind of in my mind thinking I'm I'm very shocked. Um, I'm very put off by it. Um, But at the same time, I'm thinking a couple of things. He's just crazy. That's just crazy talk. I, maybe I could put him off. I could, if I could put this off, I could deal, deal with this another day. I'm kind of in shock. Like, I just keep talking in circles, and maybe I can just get out of this car and go get my daughter. Right. 
Um, everything feels like if I could just say or do whatever, I want to just get out of this car and go get my daughter. What the craziness he just told me, I will deal with it later, but I can't get past it, uh, what's just happened to me. So about how long was, he, was this conversation? I would say it was back and forth like that for about an hour. Okay. And this was while sitting at Walmart? Mm -hmm. Okay. In the parking lot. At any time, did y'all have any, was there any kissing or anything like that? No, um, he grabbed my hand and held my hand while I talked. Okay. And again, that was another thing that I was, I was put out by, but again, I was just like, whatever I can do to get out of this, I'm going, I'll be okay. Just okay. get me out of this awkwardness and let me right. go and I'll figure it out later. Okay. Um, so up to this point, you had no idea that's his feelings for you? No, okay. not at all. And there had been no physical interaction between the two of no. you? Mm -hmm. okay. No. Okay. Um, all right, so after that, what happened next? Um, eventually, he kept kind of wanting to know where I was at with my feelings. And I kept talking in circles about that I don't know what you're saying to me. Like, what you're saying to me, I can't fathom or process what you're saying to me. Okay. Trying to put him off. And eventually, we um, in the conversation, I get in my car and I go to pick up my daughter. And I talk to my family and, of course, um, have some time with them to apologize and talk to them about what happened and how right. I did not speak to them about what Mr. Donovan told me. Okay. Um, I got my daughter and headed home. He uh, continued to text me, and then eventually um, I, I quit answering text messages. Um, and I think he, at some point he ends up calling me. Um, he said, because I think he texted something, I'm riding around and I'm not going to get home, go home until I've heard from you or something along those lines. So I call him back, and of course he's kind of still try still again trying to fill me out it's not about me getting home okay or if I was emotionally okay because I was a wreck it was still about trying to find out what if I had the same feelings back for him and I kept saying this is crazy this is crazy this has been a crazy day like if you could just you know I, I don't know what you're even saying to me it makes no sense what do you mean in love with me right and then I end up um, ending the call with him and going home and going to bed. And that's that was the end of that day. I know this was two years ago, but did you save these text messages? No. Okay. No, I didn't. And quite honestly, um, there's a lot of text messages I didn't save, um, mainly because I was ashamed. I didn't want anybody to know about this. And I was afraid to tell anybody about it, so I deleted okay. them. And was this on your personal cell or your work cell? Do you oh, have personal. a work cell? I do. Okay. I do. But this is all state. on the personal mm -hmm. cell? Okay. Yes. All right. So how awkward was it when you had to go back to the office? Uh, really, 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 really awkward. All right. Um, I think he had like a card on my desk. I don't um, know. What, what was the 14th? Like, do you know what day of the week that I, was? It was a Saturday. Okay, Saturday. Um, and I will say 14th. I hope I'm right. But four, 14th. I mean, that's what be. it says on the answer. Report, okay, so yes. You know. um, that was a Saturday. So um, I'm back to work Monday. I am not in a good place Monday at all. Um, emotionally, mentally, physically, even just sick okay. in, in my own self. Right. Um, again, my, my thoughts about what he had told me was merely, okay, maybe it's just, is this an older, I want to be gentle here, like an older man that just has feelings for a younger woman mm -hmm. and maybe I can be cold enough, but kind enough and stern enough to just make it go away. He right. doesn't know. Maybe I can just make it go away. So my posture, I guess, by Monday morning is... I'm going to take care of this and get this to go away. And by getting it to go away, you're going to be cold and Not distant. cold or mean, just distant, yeah. um, all about what's happened to me, how to move on, how to move on from the office, how, how do I press forward through this kind of, kind of posture. Um, he's continuing in the vein of pursuing me at that time. He's, um, there are encouraging cards that he's left for me and letters. Um, he would hide cards and letters in my desk um, periodically throughout that week. I'm not sure the dates. I, I think I have copies of some of those that would substantiate maybe the Monday or Tuesday. But throughout that week, I was getting encouraging cards, you know, keep your head up kind of stuff. Um, and then I think by the end of that week or the next week, he, he writes the letter basically saying, you know, hey, I've got these feelings for you. Um, you need to not be ashamed of what happened. 
Um, all the while, when we talk about the incident, he's saying it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That's all he keeps saying, it's, it's going to be okay. All right. At any point, did you ever ask him for any help dealing no. with your arrest? No, I did not. Um, but he he had insisted on helping me, and I'll be honest with you, uh, I was so afraid and worried about what this would mean for me in my entire life at that time. I was so gar so stricken by fear that there was an ease in it when he would say it was going to be okay, as if he knew. And what I what I knew is that. I was going to I, I was going to come out in the wash that I was I was okay and innocent and fine, um, and I kind of felt that I was going to take care of it myself. Um, that I felt like that I could, you know, plead with the prosecutor enough, tell her my side of the story, mm -hmm. work it out on my behalf, um, because I felt confident in the incident, what happened that day, and of course some of the things that had happened that I felt like Walmart was negligent in um, that I didn't do that they were accusing me of. So I felt like. On my own, I would have been okay, but when you have the DA kind of telling you it's going to be okay, and then maybe he's kind of giving you, I don't want to say pointers, but kind of saying, mm, you know, yep, good point. Um, Walmart didn't do this. Yep, good point. Walmart said that I stole all of these things, but I didn't actually. They sent them home with me. Yep, you're right. Keep those items. It'll be fine. We'll make sure that they know about it. Mm -hmm. So at some point, the gears did shift to more of a, it's going to be okay, and I knew that I mean, somehow he was going to it maybe guide me in some kind right. of a direction. So what ultimately happened? Ultimately, over the several weeks, which is important for you to know, over those several weeks, he was very much pursuing me romantically okay. um, with cards, gifts, um, letters, that sort of thing. Um, I guess around November. Um, when you say gifts, what are you referring to there? Um, he, over the course of those several months, he had bought me jewelry. Um, he had bought me um, some books, some other gifts, uh, just small things, but the, definitely jewelry and um, cards, um, lights. Uh, what do you think value-wise? How much were you referring to? Uh, I don't know. A couple of things were he would say custom-made from Wales that he had shipped um, and maybe something else that he had ordered off of from another company. I mean, I would still venture to say those were a couple hundred dollars. I've got all of that, and I've got pictures of it. Um, it's still unopened. So over the several week, weeks following the arrest, he was giving you cards, uh -huh, jewelry, uh -huh. other gifts? They were hidden in, in, in different places around the uh -huh. office, in my office. Um, and... Um, and all, all the meanwhile, he's telling you everything's going to be fine with your case. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe my court date was in maybe November. Okay. Um, and before the court date, I remember Walmart. I don't know if you know this about Walmart, but when you're accused of shoplifting, whether you're guilty or not, you're taking it to trial or not, they send you this nice letter saying... You know, we had all these security cameras, and we we think that you owe us $150 for our time, regardless of whether you're guilty or not. Um, and so um, I did. I, I didn't know they did that, and so I took the letter to Mr. Donovan. I was like, "What is this?" And so he took the letter and said, um, "It's fine," and it, um, he would handle it. Um, I believe he paid that to the company. It's a civil, maybe civil recovery group for Walmart. It's restitution. It wasn't. Did you give us copies of all that? I think so. All right. I, I think we have copies of okay. all that. Do you want it all? Yes, please. Okay. That'd be great. And it's not considered necessarily restitution because when you say restitution, it's usually in regards to criminal. Yeah. Uh, through the no, court it's system. still paying a victim back. Right. Uh, the but, civil attorney. But was this mandated by the court, the prosecutor? No, not yet. So, so before well, the court date. Excuse me. No, you're good. You right. don't know that. Right. And now so I, I just get a letter that. from an attorney's group. Yeah. I mean, she, she doesn't know what the terms were she she didn't have direct conversations with anybody in law enforcement everything went through him okay. mr donovan yeah so before the court date walmart sends you a letter requesting 150 dollars, and you showed it to him and mm -hmm. and it was taken care of you don't know if he paid it or but you know it was handled it was handled 
Okay. Excuse me for one second. Do you have those pictures of the... I'm trying to think so Abby doesn't have to keep going back and forth. Do you have pictures of the gifts and everything? Mm-hmm. I do. And that's in your file, the thing you gave us? Yes, it should be in, and I, have, I think I have it in my drive on my phone, too. Okay. Okay. Sorry, go on. You want that, too, right? Please. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, so your scheduled court date is... What time in November? Do you I, I, I'm sorry, and I don't. I didn't bring my timeline, but I want to say it was around maybe November, um, sometime mid late November. Um, he came into my office, and I don't remember the date. It was November seventeenth? Does that sound? Okay? That sounds right. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, <coughs> one day he came into the office and said, "Hey, I, I took a little trip out to Cedar Town." Um, I met with a prosecutor and I pled with her on your behalf and I think she knows how special you are to me. Um, and this might have been two separate conversations, but um, I'll give you the summary of both of those. And he said um, Did she... Did he give you her name? Um, not at first, um, but he had said he had been in contact with um, the prosecutor out there and she would like for you to go ahead and do a shoplifting online course and um, she emailed him that information I believe and and he forwarded that to me and I did an online shopping theft by, theft, shoplifting course um, I think it was $75 I paid for that um, then he came in with a second conversation I believe to say, um, hey, and he sat back and that, that conversation took place in my office and I remember how he sat, he kind of sat and was like, hey, look, I've had, he, everything he did for me, I didn't know beforehand. So I would find out after the fact. So at no time did you ask him to represent you on your behalf? No. Okay. No. Um, it was he always... Never, he never filed a notice of appearance. Or right, a new right. Everything that ever happened in the course of all of this, it was, here's what I did for you. Here's what I've done for you, that kind of thing. So at this time, he has the conversation. He said, look, I've you know, been in contact. I think she knows how special you are to me. Um, look, I had to do some horse trading. And that was the term he used was horse trading on your behalf. And um, so I um, began to cry, and I said, what, what do you mean by horse trading? And then he kind of veered off and didn't answer that question. And then I said, what did you have to do in order to get this case dismissed? What do you mean, horse trading? Um, he said, well, it was nothing. Um, basically, prosecutors just talking about cases or whatever. Um, it just so happens that Ms. Uh, Burford um, has a case here in Paulding County. This is what he's telling you? Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, you know who Burford was at the, that time? Yes, yes. Tell him how you knew who she was. He told me her name. Okay. okay. Um, he told me her name. And so he said, she has a case out here in Paulding County. And he kept talking. And I said, well, what do, what do you mean the prosecutor has a case here? She's got a crime commit. She committed a crime, too, and you're looking at her case. And he said, no, she actually represents a client here in uh, Paulding County. And she just had, she just asked me to take a look at her case. I can't tell you the exact quote he used, but I was led to believe during that course of that conversation that it was like an old misdemeanor case that was kind of, you know, one of those misdemeanors that are in the back of a huge filing cabinet that had been sitting there a while and just needed some eyeballs laid on it. You know, Mm -hmm. it had been there a while. Hey, can you... um, Like she had committed a crime. No, I I cleared that up. But at first you believed that. Yes, I did. Um, And then when he clarified... To explain to me that it was a that it just needed a case that needed some attention, some eyes laid on it because it was like back in the fi- back of a filing cabinet and it just needed some attention. It's one of those ones a prosecutor may not get to for years. Mm-hmm. So he just went and pulled the file and looked it over and he said, "It's a, um, I don't know his exact language, but basically it was like a, it's a crack case, anyways." And so I, I I took care of it for her. So he. I was led to believe after that conversation that it was like an old misdemeanor that didn't have any merits to it, um, and it just needed a pro- any prosecutor would have found no merits to it, and he would and he just took the time to read over it and right. he discussed it with her and said, "Hey, it's not going to have any, it's not going to go anywhere anyway. I'm going to dismiss this case." So he told you that he told her he was going to dismiss the case. Yes. Okay. And 
And when did this happen? When did this conversation happen? Um, prior to your court date? Very day? close to court, but prior to court, yes. Um, so basically, um, with all of that being said, um, I was just led to believe that it was, I, I didn't think anything was wrong with prosecutors talking about cases, and it just so happened that it was a case that was going to get worked out in the wash for her. And um, that she was just saying, hey, spend some extra attention on this. I need it taken care of, like taken care of, like just it's been there a while kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, so I didn't see anything wrong with that, um, especially considering that I felt like I was going to go through pretrial, like I, not pretrial diversion, but like I was kind of doing some things. And of course, at that time, I just wanted to talk to her and tell her my side of the story because I felt like she was going to dismiss my case. And did you ever reach out? I did own? not. I did not. Well, explain to him what you mean by you were doing some things about pretrial, like for PTI. You know what PTI is, right, Rocky? Do you know what PTI is? It's like pretrial intervention where, like, you... Like pretrial diversion type you, you same thing? You get, like, a sentence, okay. and then that stick, the case is dismissed upon completion of the terms, right. whether it's drug and alcohol, you know, whatever. So I guess my terms were the shoplifting online course. Okay. So by the time I show up for arraignment, um, they had emailed each other. She basically told them, hey, if y'all show up before the call of the calendar, we'll process the paperwork. Y'all can get in and out. And I'll even, I think she was even going to hand us my expungement package that day as well. Um, so I completed the online shopping course. Um, and then my court date, I came from my home and showed up to my court date. And Mr. Donovan was there as well at the courthouse. And he went with me to court. Okay. And what was said during the court, do you remember? Nothing that really stands out to me. Basically, she did come out before the call of the calendar, saw Mr. Donovan. They shook hands and made small talk. Uh, I think I signed off on maybe, um, sh I showed her my certificate of completion. He may have touched. Is that, you think that's what you signed off on? Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I never got a copy of this. And Mr. Donovan has kept what uh, like a file on me. Okay. Um, and I think that anything like this would probably be in his file on the right hand side of his desk on the bottom um, is a like a Jamie White file and I, I had seen it one day because he pulled out her email from that okay um, where did you say that file was in his so lower? if he turns his credenza toward the wall which is a window he's got a, a right hand drawer right here to the right of his desk it is in that bottom pull out drawer a file on me about this case about this shoplifting stuff and it's labeled with your name i don't know how it's labeled but i know he's got a file on me with all this stuff on it okay um and you said you also received the expungement paperwork um i did um so we uh, showed her my uh, shoplifting certificate um she went ahead and gave me expungement paperwork and i think that the lady that would process that was either busy or, or whatever um, because I didn't complete the expungement paperwork completely that day. I think I took it back to the office or got it, but I think he made another trip to Cedartown to either file in the expungement paperwork for me or to pick it up, but I didn't pay for any filing fees or anything if there was any associated with getting my record expunged, but um, it, to my knowledge, my this was this dismissal and there was expunged off of my record too. Did you ever submit anything to uh, the GBI for your expungement paperwork? Did I? Mm. No, I did not. Okay. Uh, I, I was under the impression that he that he did um, for me, and I think he gave me a copy of that. Uh, like a, I think it's like a GCI you mm -hmm. know, printout showing that it was gone. Okay. Did you ever get any documentation sent from GCIC in reference to that, uh, or did it just strictly come from him showing you the document? I didn't get anything directly from anyone, um, but I might have something from Polk County okay. that might have had an attachment to it. It looked like my criminal record printed out on okay. the back. And to your knowledge, uh, Mr. Donovan handled getting your record expunged and all that stuff. Yeah, I think so. I think he turned it in, and I think he, if there's any filing fees, I didn't pay them. Okay. I can tell you that. And was this at your request? I wanted the case. I would like to have had the case expunged, but I did not ask him to handle the expungement. Day. Okay. Was there any type of, uh, any other fees that were associated with this, court fees? 
I don't think so. Like that. If there were any, I didn't pay them. The only fees that I recall paying at all through this entire process was for the shoplifting course. The $75? $75. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, the, you mentioned that your belief was that it was an old misdemeanor case. Has right. that changed now? I mean, did, did you get information following that that made you know something different? Yeah, unfortunately, a few weeks ago, um, I found out that that was not the case, and that was from uh, Mr. Rollins. And what did you learn from Mr. Rollins? Um, Mr. Rollins uh, called me, said he was uh, really upset and burdened. Um, Excuse me for one second. Okay. Um, do you think we have the paperwork we can give to Rocky from um, the county? You think Possibly. We I brought it with me when we met. So if not, I may have it. Copy. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. Thank Is that you. good? You're, yeah, that's awesome. I think I, I think I may have a copy with me. I, yeah, I have to look, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, he was like convicted, upset. He said, "I don't think you realize this. Um, I, I've, I, I'm, I've really got a, a burden here, but I feel like that um, you don't even know what's going on or what happened here. Um, you don't even. I guess he said, "I want to make it real clear to you." I don't think you realize what has happened um, through the way you're talking and the way you're speaking to me. You know, I don't think you realize that something bad really happened here with Mr. Donovan in your case. Okay. He said, I'm not trying to throw any guilt or shame your way um, to feel bad about anything, right. but I don't even think you realize what's happened. This, um, this is very bad what he did. Um, so he said it multiple times that he wanted to give me that disclaimer before he went into anything else. And that was picking up after a prior conversation we had where he felt like that he, um, where he had said, uh, Mr. Donovan um, has made some kind of a statement, um, throwing all kinds of accusations your way. I still haven't seen the statement. I don't know what he's accused me of or not. Um, so he said it's just... Mr. Donovan was accusing you of things? He made a statement in regards to my um, civil stuff okay. um, and brought up the Excuse arrest. Me. We were told that he had a 40-something page affidavit. 105-page affidavit. Uh, 105. I've never seen it. Okay. But no one said, none of us have seen it. He CC'd everyone else but me. Just about. And he said it wasn't sexual harassment because it's love. Okay. If you love someone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Rollins had made a comment multiple times. Mr. Rollins was in receipt of the affidavit um, that Mr. Donovan did. And I said, I can't even believe you have a copy of that. I don't, but I don't even want to discuss it. Um, we kind of talked in circles. He was like, you know, he's bordering on the line of some criminal actions. And this was friend to friend talking. Okay. He said, he was, He said I don't know. And it's, and it's really, really a gray area. So, and I, he's like talking about, he's like, I just can't even believe that he brought it up in his, in his disposition or negotiated on your behalf. Me being the defensive person that I am, even when I feel like I'm in the right, I said, well, I didn't know she had that case. And uh, or I didn't know I didn't know she had a case like a, a case. He told me after the fact. Mm -hmm. He goes, "Who are you talking about?" And I said, "The prosecutor." I, and I said, "I don't remember her name, but it was Burford." Mm -hmm. And that was the end of that conversation. Next day, he calls me. He was up all night, can't can't sleep. Jamie, I think you've reported a crime to me, and I don't even think you realized it. And I said, "No, I don't know what you're talking about." He said, basically, um, I thought, he said, I, I kind of thought it was a gray area that he might have negotiated on your behalf for bond, which I didn't really consider it, him negotiating with the DA for my bond. He said, that's a gray area, maybe unethical, maybe criminal. But, Jamie, you don't realize that he had a case dismissed for your dismissal. Like, you're not putting the two together. And I said, no, I just thought it was, it was let's, let's get the work done. And he said, no, Jamie, I've researched the case, and I can tell you that what happened was that case was not an old misdemeanor, like you thought. It was a case that was on the trial calendar. It was pending trial, and it, um, our, the state had filed motions um, asking for similar transactions to be involved. Jamie, it was a DUI, and he was a habitual violator and a speeding. And we had asked for his similar transactions to be um, allowed in trial, and the judge ruled on the state's behalf. We were going to trial, and we were bringing in similar transactions when he dismissed the case. And this was in the file that he read? Yes. Okay. Now, 
he indicated to me he did not read the file, but he got all of that from, I guess, our database or just the shell of what we do for okay. on a day-to-day basis. Um, I was very upset knowing that. Uh, I did not. I did not know that. So that was the first I had heard that it was actually a case that was on the trial calendar pending trial. So that's not what was uh, relayed to you initially no. by Donovan? No. Okay. No, no. no. I, that would have stood out to me. DUI, DUIs are serious. They're serious to me, but DUIs are serious, and we typically, you know, don't reduce those charges or dismiss them unless there's something, um, you know, bad wrong with the case or whatever. So it was surprising, very shocking. Are you ever in um, uh, conversations with any of the attorneys about plea offers? Sure, all the time. Okay. Um, when it comes to a plea offer, let's say it happened prior to a motion. Mm-hmm. Um, after the motion, if the state wins, do you all renegotiate at that time the plea, or does the plea say the same, or do you all go to trial? Like, What is normal procedures for you all? Um, typically, yeah, your prosecutor is going to r- look at that again. Um, but usually what you kind of have the policy of first offer, best offer, and that's kind of how we tend to operate, even okay. if we're losing the motion. Um, but if you have a motion for similar transactions that come in, depending on the case, there are times where um, it doesn't, okay, fine, he's not going to allow similar, so the case is still strong. We're mm-hmm. going to continue to move forward. Here's the offer. Right. So it just depends on the circumstances. So let's take this case, the one at, in, at hand here. Mm-hmm. So the, the state won the motion for right. previous transactions. From what I'm told, yes. Okay. So at that point, would a prosecutor then reduce the plea or would they dismiss the case? I typical. Would, I'm not asking. Yeah, I don't know. To this. I, I can't imagine that typically you win a motion for similar and you dismiss a case. That would, that yeah. would, be very, very surprising to right. me. And the reason I ask is because I, I deal with a lot of district attorney's offices, and sure. some of them have a policy that if you make us go through the motions and have to go to a hearing, mm-hmm. and we win the hearing, we're sorry, we're not reducing the offer, mm-hmm. and right. you know that previous offer stands, or sure. we're going to trial. That's very typical. So I didn't know if that was the same pr- practice at your Sure, but they're going to be asking for more at, when they win at trial, not when you win a motion for similar transactions. That's pretty big. Yeah, okay. All right. So, uh, Mr. Rollins then asked you to draft a document on that day? He did. He said, I would really appreciate a statement from you just telling me that. He, and he reiterated, you're not at, at fault. You're not in trouble. Jamie, you know, it's okay. You didn't know. He says, I still don't think you understand what I'm saying. I said, I really don't. Um, to this day, I, I know that you're what you're investigating, but I still don't understand what, what, what charge you could even apply right. to this. I, I have no idea. Right. Um, but I'm just telling you. Uh, what I do know and he asked for a statement I said I'm really going to need to speak to my attorney before um, anything goes forward but I said it sounds like you've got enough information he felt like there was enough on his own right. to go to the judges and I said well that would be great leave me out of it um, no disrespect to the criminal justice system I will work in it I love it with all my heart but like in this regard what I've got going on and the allegations and the pain and the, the hurt I've been through um, in this, the criminal stuff is really not, I'm cooperative, I want to help y'all, but it's not really, I mean, it's not my heart, it's not where I'm seeking, it's not what I'm doing. I didn't bring this, I, I'm not, this isn't something that I set right. out to do or know anything about. I'm just cooperating with what everybody's asking me to do. Okay. And is that the statement that you have in front of you? It is, it is. Okay. I think, was this for me? Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure this was yes, the, the that's correct statement. statement. That's that's correct. Okay. All right. And I didn't show this to you, but um, there's really no reason to. But this was uh, this missile you saw that. Mm-hmm. And this is just where I got the date from. It says your court date. How were you notified about your court date in Cedar Town? Um. I may have gotten a notice in the mail. I don't, I don't recall. Okay. Were you ever interviewed by a police officer? No. Okay. So 
basically just showed up and then and transported you. There was no right, no investigation. No, right? Okay. no investigation. And I was told when I got there that I wouldn't be there very long. Okay. Um, did you ever get a copy of your police report? No. Okay. That's it. Sure. And on here it says the case was dismissed. So it wasn't null prost. Uh, it was just dismissed null prost. Yeah, I mean it says dismissed case NP, so I'm assuming null prost. They usually put them both. Yeah. Well, but null prost is different, as you know. Anyway. I'd have to look it up. And the issue is if the case is expunged. Um. Was there any documentation that you signed in reference to your expungement? Uh, yeah, I think there was a, a packet of paperwork I had to sign okay. for the expungement. And but you never I've delivered seen a this. packet. You did have this. Did I? Yeah, I have seen this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've read that. You didn't. You didn't transport the dip, um, the expungement paperwork though, correct? You said Mr. Donovan handled all that. Yeah. So you just signed it, and then he asked for it? Did you have it in your office? Like, how did that happen? I think it was, uh, he gave it to me, said, get, like, do this immediately, and I took care of it immediately, and I assumed he drove it down there to Cedartown. Okay. And again... I know he made several trips back and forth to Cedartown right. on my behalf. But at no point did you ever request him, or did you request no, him to do it? No, I didn't. He was offering to do it? Yes, and it was after the fact. Everything that I that he did for me, I found out after he had already done it. Okay. And I guess to say, to explain it, you would have to know the type of person he is. He is extremely controlling. He, he kind of comes in and throws things at you and tells you how it is. Um, he is very um, tall and overbearing and loud. Um, I mean, what he says goes, you don't get a say-so. Um, and oftentimes, like when I, and I know it's in regards to the civil stuff, but anything that he does, you you feel very much like you are beholden to him for something always. Um, other people feel this way, mm -hmm. um, and I especially was after he was taking care of everything. He met me at the jail, so that right. was an assumption that I got out because of him. Mm -hmm. So everything at that time for me felt like I was beholden to him for everything. Like he right. held my life. Um, he held he held the keys to to my my job my life my um, career my criminal record um, my reputation me as a mother me as a wife I, I felt like he was beholden to all of that so he would tell me things after the fact and you don't disagree with him you don't you don't say you don't ever disagree with him and 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 other employees would say the same about him and the way he operates. And he was quiet, and he would tell me after it happened. Okay. I was a different person then, and I was very much under his thumb. And, and you know, looking back, he absolutely told me that he was in love with me at that time because I was at my worst I've ever been. Mm -hmm. I mean, being arrested and, and going to jail right. is awful, and, he, and my daughter was there. I'm humiliated, yeah. humiliated, and I'm very sorrowful and shameful. And the time that he picked to do that, nobody who's true, you know, truly cares about someone would would do that, and and especially not in this situation. Never once, I need you to know, never once did I have any feelings for him back, or indicated okay. I have feelings for him back. I never even um, came off as an heir, in my opinion, my body language, posture, anything that I would ever have done to have indicated that I had these same feelings back. In fact. In December, it had gotten to be so overwhelming and so much after all of this, and especially after the case had been settled and all of that, I, I, I started telling him that he needed to leave me alone. In December of 2017? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it progressed throughout. Oh, yeah, and he came right back and got right back in in March, and, and he would go through these quiet spells where he would be silent treatment. Mm -hmm. The whole office would be like, he's in a terrible mood, Jamie, you're the only one that can fix it. And so I would go down to the office and have these long conversations with him and fix it for a little while mm -hmm. until he would go on another cycle, and it was just cycle after cycle after yeah. cycle. Okay. And uh, when did it all uh, culminate to the end? Um, was it this year? January. Well, around January this year, I just started, I can't do this anymore. All right. There was no one thing that happened that made me say I'm done. It was Tell just about the posting. 
thing he posted in the oh he posted in the paper um, which we had, we're giving you a copy of in the pay in the paper he took out an article in the paper this was probably before my case was handled as a matter of fact the date should be on there he took out an out because he kept telling me one day you're I'm going to convince you that you're going to love me one day you're going to want to be with me one day you'll see and I was like no 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 he took out an ad in the paper that said one day and period and put it in the paper for me to see uh, and brought it for me to see with a bunch of gifts he also would post on Facebook cryptic uh, messages that were directed at me with quote that he would get t- tell me in a conversation in order to get my attention mm-hmm. he would constantly post on Facebook one day one day one day and that was my phrase to know that he was talking to me that one day I was going to fall back and I was going to fall in love with him too and be in love with him like he was in love with me and that we would um, you know be together or whatever he was um, during this entire time he was writing a novel Um, he minimized it at his desk constantly and throughout the day when we'd have conversations he would kind of sort of document and go in and out of fantasies um, about me. Um, He gave me an excerpt of a fantasy that he um, had wrote of us going away to a hotel to stay together and um, Brass Town, which is where the PAC um, conferences are held. Mm -hmm. And that um, he gave me a one-page excerpt of that fantasy. Did you ever go to PAC conferences? Um, I did, but I didn't go with the prosecutors. I went with Victim Witness. has their own separate conference. But, yes, I've been there multiple times. Um, I've never been when he's there. Okay. Um, he had come back from um, a prosecutor's uh, or DA's conference, and that I think he kind of influenced that into the novel, basically saying he wanted me to be there. And he very explicit about how we would spend the night together and stay together. Mm-hmm. Um, he was constantly going in and out of that fantasy novel. It was over 32,000 words of a novel he was writing about me that he would keep minimized. He would update from his phone, and the phone would connect to it as well. Um, I've asked the county to get a hold of that to kind of substantiate some of the things because it was sort of a documentation of the day-to-day, even though he would weave in and out of fantasy. So there may be some things that I've forgotten or dates that I've forgotten. I know he was saving all my text messages and emails and Mm -hmm. things like that. That was kind of the guy he was. Um, He... um, would make me ride with him to uh, meetings and um, one meeting in particular we rode back and he veered off onto a side took off a diverted off of the route all right this is abby y'all met hey oh, sorry. um I don't know what we're talking about we were talking about um <laughs> coming back from a luncheon that he uh, yes, requested right. me to ride um he decided to take off um, off the route. Um, everyone was expecting me back. It was a regular business day. Um, we had gone to, I believe it was the Chamber of Commerce luncheon. He took off down a back road and parked and wanted to just quote unquote talk, hold my hand and talk. Um, no one knew where we were at. Um, no one knew that I was um, late getting back or I was expected to be back, but no one knew that we were down in what we were on. It was off the route coming back, and it was on the side back road. Okay. Um, I decided that I didn't want to ride with him anymore, so I would make up excuses for every meeting that we would have to be at for a while um, together. Uh, one meeting in particular, um, he sat across from me. It was at a domestic violence task force meeting. I believe this was before my court date as well. Yes, it was before my court date. It, this time I was very shrunken. I was very down, and so I kind of had that sunken posture at a meeting, and was just kind of off in left field. He's watching me, staring at me the entire time. This task force is about 25 people talking. Okay. I notice that he's looking at me, but I'm not looking at him back. So I have my hands like this. He sends me a text, which you'll see in there, um, something along the lines of "You better cover up your hands because people will start to talk." So he's obsessed with like hands. So he was like staring at my hands um, the entire time that I was at the meeting. So I got the text, but I acted like I didn't, you know, really get the text message. And I just placed my hands down and sat on the rest of the meeting. So I just felt disgusting and gross. Um, Just a lot of stuff like that. He would have his assistant while he was out of town um, hide stuff in my office for me to find while he was gone. Um, Who's the assistant? Tiffany Watson. She knows all about everything, and he's and and she knows all that he's been doing. 
Um, she has uh, not supported me or um, has lied about a lot of things, has made up a lot of crazy stories about me. Is very much supportive of him, even though her and I have had conversations where I basically indicated to her that she needed to, um, that it would be best for her to quit um, passing things to me and being a part of it because um, eventually something bad might happen to her. Or she might lose her job. Uh, I very much felt intimidated, like anything that I didn't comply with or do, he was going to fire somebody over. He was firing people or threatening to fire people over different things in regards uh, to me the whole time. Have you told Tiffany Watson to stop? Does she continue doing it? Or? Yes. She, mm -hmm. she she has maintained, oh, I'm just staying out of it. To this day, she is continually um, doing things to harass me or, or bring, bring more harm to me. Does she have anything to do with the... Uh no, and I. this paperwork or anything like he's that? He's never indicated to me that she knows anything about it. Okay. All right. So that's the civil payment. These emails are from him. Or one email. And this is the gifts? Mm hmm. Okay. I think so. Yes, he filled it. And a creepy card. Uh, yeah, and it looks like a book. That's a book he wanted to okay. give to my daughter. And somewhere in the book he says, don't keep this at the house, it'll get you in trouble. And I don't know what he meant by that. I never read it. Uh, the bond paperwork. Okay. And it's your criminal history in here. Okay. Is. Yeah, he wanted to take me on trips to the mountains. He was constantly, even as of late the, uh, this year, um, wanted me to take a drive with him and go to the mountains with him during the work day. Um, he wanted me to go to lunch out of the county so no one would see us. He was constantly asking me to go to lunch. and um, go sp Specifically, he wanted to take me up toward Brass Town and, and ride around and hang out there for the day. What was he meaning by, I'll, I'll lend you my handcuffs? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, you can only assume. All right. And that was probably in regards to he knew that it, I was really apprehensive about riding with him, too. So he kept on and on and on saying he would um, he would try not to touch me or anything like that if I went with him to the church in the mountains. Okay. The, re this, the, the recordings, recordings are, yeah, the recordings are lengthy. Um, they do go into the mindset that he's in as far as how much he loves me or professes his love for me you can very much hear the intimidation of some of the things he said a couple of things that are highlighted in a couple of the recordings where um he says that uh, i say i don't I'm, i just want this to all stop would you please quit texting me and this is all just dictation of yeah the, it's my dictation like a transcription of right it? yeah and okay. it's just me being fast and trying to get it and i did that um so. yeah i did that mainly just to save some some time, but I do have the recordings to substantiate those. Okay. But the gist of those are, you know, um, he uh, has indicated that because um, I'm telling, I'm saying people in the office are starting to realize this. I don't want to lose my job. Please, right. you know, kind of make it stop. And he's saying, no, I've put an end to it. I've I've told nosy so and so that it was just me and you talking about this. Um, I said, well, my husband's going to find out. I don't want to be deleting my text messages and talking to him and trying to explain why my boss is texting me all the right. time so I need for this to stop and he says well he shouldn't treat you like that I'd like nothing more than to stick a 45 to his head and hold his head down in the creek and tell him he can't treat you that way okay. um, he also um, indicates that in the recordings that all of his body parts um, all of his private parts still work um, he is vague about what he means at first and I'm not saying anything back and then he says um let me just be really clear that they all still function and I'm still fine and I work I'm, I work really fine down there um, and um, I'm not without experience I think is this quote in the recordings and then at some point he says he would like nothing more than to take me off and make love to me okay so this is somewhat of a hostile working environment for uh, yes yeah. all the time and, and it would cycle and things would be good and I 
and, and it would be great and I think I can control this that's right. that's my whole downfall is I felt like I can control it and make it go away right. and every time I, I, he was always going to win and he was very jealous of any of the other men that I spoke to in the office um, he's um, there's been accusations thrown I was having an affairs with other people he's questioned my employees behind my back to see if I was having an affair um, one of the employees told me at some point in time she felt like he was asking questions not to see if I would, if that was true, but to fill me out to see if I would be if I was sexually active outside of my marriage. Um, all kinds of rumors and, and gossips that have come that I kind of roll back to him. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it was my reputation; it was on the on the line constantly. People were being fired or threatened to be fired. My friends. Um, were threatened to be fired. Um, one of my friends tried to confront him about this at some point. Um, something's happened because she tried to confront him about it and he um, shoved her away and said no and then uh, threatened to fire her over something minor uh, within that same time frame and she's now working for him. Okay. That just happened two weeks ago. So that's, I don't know what he's doing there, but that's there, definitely something that seems like she, if there was a key witness, there's not any witnesses to this. Right. But if there were key witnesses, she would be the key witness, and he just hired her. Okay. So, I just want to confirm all the things that he did for you in reference to uh, your charges, the expungement, anything like that. All of that was done behind your back without your knowledge, and then he brought to your attention after it was That's done. That's correct. You never once asked him for him to do your expungement. You never asked him to handle your case for you or anything like that. No. He took that on his own initiative. Yes. Okay. Um, do you, and it may be in there, but still have the email in reference to him providing you the expungement? I think so, and I think you may have had Okay, that. perfect. I'll look through it, and, and yeah, I'll do it. Be in there, yeah. Okay. Um, can you think of anything else? And and I know that we, we kind of hit on it, and I, and I do think it is relevant to his mindset of why some of these things or why he did what he did. Um, but can you think of anything else dealing with that incident, the, uh, the charge and the court and all that kind of stuff? No, he was very much trying, he was very much pursuing me and trying to get me to fall in love with him, and that was the motive behind what he was doing. Okay. And that's the only, I mean, that was, that was so, it. So your belief is that the reason why he was doing all these things to help you on your case was because he was in love with you and he was trying to buy your affection, more or less. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, I'm just trying to get by, you know, the yeah. understanding. I mean, at the time, I thought, ignorantly, I thought that yeah, it was the right thing. Like, it was it was something that, you know, you're you're helping your employee out, mm -hmm. that I was a good employee worth all of the benefits and the great things that I was getting. Right. Hindsight is twenty twenty on that. Okay. Um, looking I, back now. Looking back now, he was doing it to completely control me okay. and manipulate me. And you don't know what money he used, right, for the payment of the fines. I'm assuming y'all don't know that, right? If it was personal money or something? Uh, I don't know. Do you know? Money? I don't know. I mean, I would I would like to assume it was his own personal money. Right. Okay. Why don't you tell him also about your dad? Um, yeah, my dad became um, ill with cancer. Okay. Um, and at some point I talked to Mr. Donovan and I said, you know, I'm just under a lot of stress right now with everything going on with my dad. I did tell him about my dad having cancer and that I would want to take some time off of work, maybe to take him for appointments or, or this and that. Um, at some point he wanted to start paying for, like, my dad needed m money. And uh, my sister had set up a GoFundMe account, and he just kept refusing to use the GoFundMe account to give money. And so he was given uh, money over a course of a period of time. I know he gave money for, to my dad to pay for his mortgage at some point. Um, I became really uncomfortable with the process because, especially with money, I know how he ties money to control. And even though he was saying that he just saw someone in his purview that he wanted to help, and he felt led by God, um, he used spiritual language because that's my vibe and that worked for me. Um, so he said that God had told him that he needed to give money to my dad and help him out and that that was the right thing to do and he used scripture to back it up. So I said I very much appreciate that. They were destitute, like really bad, so he was giving money to them. Um, 
When was this? This was during the, I mean, pretty much the the whole time. I believe starting in 2017, maybe. Uh, I'll have to go back and think about that. But um, definitely over the course of the next year, he was... Um, After you've been arrested? Yes. Uh, none of that was before. Um, he was given money, like, in the form of, he would, I said, I don't want anything to do with it. Please use the GOAT. And I told him in that in December to stop texting me. This was done. I don't have these feelings for you. Please, this is not appropriate. Please don't do this. Please use the GoFundMe account if you feel led to help my dad. But do not give me money to give to him. Do not filter that money through. It's just not appropriate. It's not okay. Um, he began to send my dad directly, still not using the GoFundMe, um, paying for his mortgage virtually. I don't know how much money he was given, but I was under the assumption it was enough to help pay for his mortgage. Um, how was he giving it to your dad? He was mailing it directly to his house and cars. Mailing cash, check? I think check. I, I, I think it was check. Um, he was, uh, then he... Uh, uh, check? Personal check that I, I you saw. I never saw the checks, okay. but um, yeah, I yes, but it was personal check because the reason I know that is because when my dad went to cash it, the bank called him and Dick, Dick came to life about how the bank called him to verify that this man could come cash a check at his bank, which made me feel really bad. I, it was another demeaning thing to me, like my dad can't cash this check at your bank and you're so great because right. they called you, um, and that also tells you that the amount must have been pretty substantial. What bank was it? Um, he banks with um, he Sonovas. Yes. Donovan, not yes. her dad. Donovan. Right, Donovan. Sonovas Bank. Okay. So, and, um, yeah, I think it's Sonovas. And the reason I know that is because um, he was also uh, overheard that I was given about $50 a week and going to buy my, my parents' groceries. When I say it was bad, it was really bad. So I was buying them groceries, and so he started providing these little tiny little envelopes in my desk, a $50 a week uh, a cash bill, mm -hmm. and um, was folding it up and putting it at my desk, like hiding it in my desk to give me to give to my dad. Um, again, knowing that I told him that we weren't, we can't accept that. We'll be fine. That's too much. We're not going to do that. He insisted, said it was something that God had led him to do. He really wanted to bless and help out. So he would give these about weekly. So I can't tell you how much that added up to, but it was over the course, I would say, of maybe a year um, of time. And so it was um, so much so that my sister was like, I want to be a good steward of this $50 she was like keeping receipts to show that like every penny is going to my parents. Right. Um, and then I was doing the same if I bought the groceries, but we were very good stewards of the $50 that it was given. Um, just because we, you know, my family was destitute and they mm -hmm. felt so blessed that, and, and they still were like, we can't believe that somebody would have the kindness of their heart. You know, your boss is so wonderful to us. Mm -hmm. And I must say that, um, he used that a lot to kind of manipulate me and make me feel bad. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad had some lease issues with the house, so dad, so Dick came in to sweep in again and help him with the legal issues with his house. Right. So Dick was giving him sort of legal advice to help with his lease um, issues. And at some point, Dick was like, hey, I'm helping, you know, negotiate this with your landlord or whatever when this lease purchase, but it's kind of getting out of my expertise because I'm out of the wash. So he had a friend to start helping dad as well. So they were all three working on my dad's legal issues with his lease with his house. Okay. Um, he was standing to lose his lose the house, too. Um, all of a sudden, um, they were in the middle of negotiations to get that worked out, and two months ago, the attorney quit calling my dad back. Dropped, I mean, never gave him an explanation, didn't talk to him about it, and left my dad and them still not sure if they're going to have a home to live in. Right. Um, I did not tell my parents anything because I wanted it. It Dick said and it was just it was something that was nice he was doing. It had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell my parents anything until last Friday. Okay. They found out about all of it, and they only found out about a week ago because I wanted to keep them innocent in all mm -hmm. of it. Of course, Dick um, stopped giving them money when all of this started, so right. it was about me. Yeah. About the control, about the manipulation, about having my family against me as well. Right. Can you think of anything else? I know we covered a lot. Yeah, but, I know. Uh, there is a lot, and there's so much to say, but, I mean, the gist of it I think you've covered. Okay. For your purposes. All right. There's just a couple things I need to get from you. Okay. Time is 2.18.